Hello everyone and welcome to video 9 in the OCR A-level PE Anatomy and Physiology series. So what we're going to be looking at today guys is part 1 of ATP resynthesis and the different energy systems to resynthesize ATP. So by the end of today's video what you should be able to do is firstly explain why ATP is a good energy source. Secondly, explain how the ATP PC system and the lactic acid systems work. And thirdly, state the pros and cons of both of these energy systems. So before we get into the video, guys, what I'd like you to do is pause the video here and just get down these key terms because they are crucial for underpinning the knowledge that we will obtain later throughout the video. So now we get in the video, guys, what we're going to look at is why ATP is actually a good energy source for us humans. So basically, these are just like one or two mark state questions in the exam. So basically, they're small, they're soluble, they're easily broken down through one reaction, and they're easily transported around the cell. Just get them on a flashcard and just learn them for those easy two marks in the exam, guys. So basically, what we need to know now is the physiology of the ATP PC system, which is a coupled reaction, as we saw in the last slide, the definition where the by no the product of one reaction is used as a reactant in another reaction. So this is technically how it works. So ATP is broken down by this red arrow by the enzyme ATPase into ADP or adenosine diphosphate plus a phosphate plus energy and that energy is then used for the muscular contraction and that's an exothermic reaction. The second stage of this is how we resynthesize it. So phosphocreatine which is stored in the cell is broken down by the enzyme creatine kinase into a phosphate and a creatine plus more energy. Now that energy that I've circled is then used in the next reaction, so the energy plus the ADP from the first reaction plus the phosphate from the second reaction is then, you know, resynthesized in an endothermic reaction to form ATP. So it's taking in the energy to form the next molecule. So basically, that's what you need to know. And you just need to explain that process within the exam for like, f you know, three, four marks, or maybe it could be a five or six mark. It also tells you to state the pros and cons of this energy system, which we will do now. So. The advantages of this system are basically very quick as phosphocreatine is stored in the muscles. There's no need for oxygen as it's anaerobic. Provides energy for high intensity exercise. The PC resynthesis time is short, so recovery time is also short. And there's no harmful byproducts produced. So, you know, it's quite a good energy system. So you're thinking so far, so why don't we just keep doing this? Well, basically, the PC stores in the muscles are limited. So you can't actually go you know, for more than that 10 to 12 seconds, as we see here. As well, it's got a very low ATP yield, as one phosphocreatine equates to only one ATP being resynthesized. So not the most effective way to, you know, resynthesize ATP. The most effective way, as we'll learn later, is the aerobic energy systems, but that's slow. So this is good for quick energy. And we also need to look at how all the energy systems interplay to provide energy for exercise, which we'll do in a later video. So now we're going to look at anaerobic glycolysis or the lactic acid energy system. Either one is fine to use in the exam. The exam board will it, you know, accept both. So basically, it's a very simple process again. So muscle and liver glycogen is broken down by the enzyme glucose phosphorylase into glucose. Glucose is then broken down further into phosphofructokinase, which you can abbreviate to PFK. And pyruvate is broken down by lactate dehydrogenase, or LDH, into lactate. Now, why is it broken down? It's because there's no oxygen. So in the, la you know, the absence of oxygen, pyruvate is broken down into lactate, which, as we'll see in a minute, is a harmful byproduct. So basically, how we get ATP from this system is that breakdown of glucose into pyruvate by PFK, that releases to ATP. Um, you don't need to understand, you know, the biology or biochemistry of how that happens that's just what happens glucose to pyruvate gets you to atp so very simple guys simplified version from the exam board here so basically we also need to understand both the advantages and the disadvantages of this energy system as we always do so the advantage of this energy system is it provides quick energy for high intensity exercise it's quick because you don't need to wave oxygen and due to glycogen stores the system has access to more energy for atp synthesis you know, in contrast to the ATP P system where PC stores are limited. And also two ATP, you know, is resynthesized by one mole of glucose, which is a higher yield than that ATP PC system. However, there's always disadvantages. So, you know, one of them is it creates that harmful bipolar lactic acid. Now, you know, why is it bad? It's because it slows enzyme function, causing fatigue. That's meant to say fatigue. Sorry, guys. My spelling is atrocious. 
as you'll understand, you know, later on, and which will then cause due muscular contraction failure. As well as that, it still has a relative low ATP yield compared to the aerobic system, which we'll look at has 38 ATP yield per, you know, mole of glucose. So, you know, basically, that's about that. So guys, let's just quickly go over what we've learned in this video. So firstly, we can now explain why ATP is a good energy source. Secondly, we can explain how the ATP P system and the lactic acid systems work. And finally, we can now state the pros and cons of both of those energy systems. Moving forward into the next video, we're going to look at the part two of the ATP V synthesis topic. So what we'll be able to do in that video is explain what the aerobic energy system is, explain the pro, well, state the pros and cons of that energy system, explain and explain the energy system. Bloody hell. So in the next video moving forward, guys, we're going to look at ATP resynthesis part two. So in that video, we will look at the physiology of the aerobic energy system. We will look to be able to state the pros and cons of that energy system. We can then state and explain what is meant by the energy continuum and state and explain what is meant by intermittent exercise. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and share it with your friends who are also studying A-level PE. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.